before we get too caught up with um, the specifics of the hardware involved with TDTR, um, I thought it, now would be a good opportunity to actually walk through what our overall goal is here of, of the equipment. Um, so let me walk you through the anatomy of the TDTR signal. So what are those? What exactly are the lasers doing at various points throughout the system? And what is it that we're trying to detect? Um, so obviously at the output of our titanium sapphire laser, the objective is to have a laser output that's basically just a pulse train. What that means is that there's basically like one pulse that comes out, well, there are 80 million pulses that come out per second each approximately the same um, intensity. So that's the laser output. Um, and then basically the idea is that we're gonna break the laser beam into pump and probe. But the most important feature of a time domain thermoreflectance system is what we do to the pump beam. Um, every TDTR system I've ever seen has an electro-optic modulator um, that, whose job is to basically turn the pump pulse, so, so at some point before this modulator, you split it into pump and probe, and then the pump beams will be modulated, which just means we turn them on and off at a certain rate. Um, so for example, if I have an 80 megahertz stream and I modulate it at um, 10 megahertz, that means that the cycle changes, um, you know, every eight, every eight pulses, the the cycle repeats itself. So like there'll be four pulses on, four pulses off, four pulses on, four pulses off. That is the goal of an electro-optic modulator. The, the, the goal of that thing is to turn the laser beam on and off at a rate that you specify, um, which is typically somewhere near 10 megahertz if you have an 80 megahertz system, but it doesn't have to be. Um, then we will use a delay stage to um, either advance the pump beam, which is what I, my preferred method, or uh, many groups will delay the sensing beam or the probe beam. Um, so one way or another, the, pump, the probe beam arrives later than the pump beam. Um, so each one of the pump pulses will create a temperature spike um, on, let me go back here, each one of those pump pulses, so at least when the ones that, are, that exist, will create a temperature spike on the surface of your sample. Um, and if I'm plotting the temperature versus time, there'll be a temperature decay on the very surface of your sample. Those are the black lines that are drawn in these graphs here. Um, then the sensing pulse will be delayed from the, the pump pulse. And um, you know basically it will just essentially be the same as the laser output, right? It's just a pulse train, um, 80 megahertz worth of pulses, um, but it'll come in at a later time. Now, sometimes when it comes in, right, because the pump pulse is the pump is turning on and off, so the pump is creating this temperature spike. But then there are long durations where the pump's not really creating any temperature spikes because the pump is turned off. Um, so sometimes when the sensing pulse comes in, it senses a temperature on the surface. Sometimes when it comes in, it doesn't. Um, so. The, it, now, it turns out that the reflectivity of a metal depends on temperature, which means that sometimes when the sensing beam comes in, there is one reflectivity corresponding to the raised temperature, and sometimes when it comes in, there's not, right? Because the pump pulse isn't always shining. Um, and that means that the reflected signal, the thing that actually makes it to the detector, the thing that we detect, basically has some pulses that are more intense than others. So during the period when the, um, the, mod, the pump is not, the pump is turned off due to the modulation, there'll be a different reflectivity and a different detector signal. So essentially there's sort of two levels of signal. So it's like on, off, on, off. Each one of those will, will create a different detected probe signal on whatever detector you're using on the backside. The goal of time domain thermoreflectance is to basically feed that detector signal, which has an os a small oscillating portion of the intensity of those probe beams, feed that into a lock-in amplifier, which is a device that can measure small fluctuations in voltage. Um, and that is basically its job, is to dis detect small fluctuations at voltage at a specific um, frequency that you know. 
And in this case, we know what, what frequency things are being modulated at because we were the ones who designed the modulation of the pump pulses. So that is essentially the, the goal of time domain thermal reflectance is these um, graphs here. And the rest is all hardware. How do you accomplish that using the right optics? And how do you accomplish that using the right circuitry so that you can get that detector signal into a lock-in amplifier and make sure that the detector signal is large enough to actually see?